As technology progresses, sometimes great ideas and features are, are left behind. For example, Palmas devices like this, this little guy here briefly displaced business cards in a lot of professional circles in the, in the late 90s. Um, I could walk up to somebody and easily beam my contact information and they would have it at hand. Um, Today we still use a business card because there's no cell phone app that, that easily allows me to go to, a, you know, using an iPhone to go walk up to an Android user and, and exchange information. I know, you know, folks have released apps trying to do that, but, but nothing has been standardized enough so they're actually a practical solution where I don't have to carry a business card anymore. Um, so, so the device we're talking about here, the HP 200LX, is, is like that in many, in many ways. For example, it's a, it's a tiny portable device, but look what I'm doing right here. I'm going to, I'm going to, print on the go using a tiny printer um, you know I, I love I love this capability I love a tiny printer I can put in my backpack a tiny device I can carry with me you know I can outline you know a presentation using using an early version of Word and anywhere I go I, I can I can print that out on demand I can I can have a hard copy um, the, the HP 200LX came out in 1994. There was an earlier model, the HP 100LX and the HP 95LX. The 100LX was a, was a very similar device. Um, it, it was also a DOS computer and, and also had a, a, had a CGA equivalent, so here's my printout here, a CGA equivalent display. Um, the HP, and this is my tiny printer here, um, uh, it's, a, it's a Pentax Pocketjet 3 Plus. Um, and you know you can see like it's, it actually is a really high quality like they're, they're, the, the 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 font looks good um, you know I, I have access to to bolding um, you know anything in word you know italics underline you know any formatting spell check um, you know you name it I can do it so you know the HP 200 LX was was preceded by the 100 LX and the 95 I wouldn't recommend the 95 but the 100 LX might be a good device for you. Um, but you know the 200 LX came out in two configurations: a one megabyte model and and a two megabyte model. This is a one megabyte model. Um, DOS can really only address 640 kilobytes of memory, so you know I really don't care. Um, most of your storage is going to be on. Uh, I had to turn it off. You want to turn it off anytime you eject your your compact flash card. Most of your storage is going to be on a compact flash card today, probably living inside an adapter in the PC card slot. Um, so let me just turn it back on. Um, you know, other other features that had that infrared port that we just used to connect to the PocketJet 3 Plus. And I'm making this look easy. Um, you know, I'll, I did do a lot of work to figure out how to install this, the, the, like the correct settings for this printer. Um, it, it wasn't easy. Um, and I use a different driver inside the applications built into the device versus inside DOS-based applications like Word. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. So it has the serial port here. I use this to connect a trackpad to this. There's a cable I will connect it to a standard serial port. It has the the DC uh, port, which you can hook your AC adapter up in. Um, that DC port can also charge the two trip or sorry, two double A batteries inside of this device. Um, and then also in, under under this slot here, it also has a, a, a backup coin coin battery. Um, so let's let's talk about a couple other features. Um, so so it's a pretty durable little device um, using a basic clamshell design. Um, you know, we of course it's portable. Let's compare it in size um, compared to uh, a later. Uh, this is a later um, portable laptop. This is a Fujitsu uh, U8. I think it's U810 um, Life Lifebook. Yeah, U810, um, which which is is much bigger. You know, like the HP 200LX can fit into my pocket. This this device, of course, won't. Um, you know, so so this display, like I said before, uh, can emulate any CGA graphic. Uh, you know, it works well with any CGA graphic program. Um, it only has four shades of, of gray, uh, but but you can see it really well in the direct sunlight, which which you know you can't necessarily do with a with a modern laptop. Um, it has a nice nice sharp sharp picture. Um, you know, works well indoors. Um, you know, it can do anything, but you, you know, it's not backlit, so of course I can't use it in bed at night um, without a, without a light. Um, of course, you know it can run any DOS program, you know, which which is which is great for for somebody that might want some some productivity software on the go. Um, you know, back in the DOS days, they solved you know they created software for anything from from spreadsheet software using Lotus One Two Three, which is built in here. Um, I also have uh, the full commercial version of Lotus installed on this device too, because um, there's certain things that I like to do that 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 don't work so well on the on the built-in version, um, like like having mouse support for one. 
Um, you know, you can you can run Word on it, like I, I just demoed. You can run um, you know a whole a whole number of task management software, graphics software, games, and, and so on. Um, it's it's a it's got instant on, you know, with with the with the on button here. Um, as soon as you want it, it's on. It's overclockable. I'm I'm using it at the stock uh, configuration, but you can add a crystal and, and some some drivers to overclock this machine. Um, and you know, with the with the compact flash card, uh, it has unlimited limited memory upgrades. You know, another cool thing is since it's an older device and it had a really, really um, hardcore following back in the day, um, you know, for people like me still using this today, um, drivers were, were released for almost anything you could think of, right? So I have a driver that when I when I boot it up in certain configurations, will mute the speaker, right? So like if I'm using Word, I don't want the, the speaker to beep when I reach the end of a line when I'm on the metro and somebody's sitting next to me or I'm on a plane and somebody's trying to sleep next to me. So, you know, there's drivers for that. There's printer drivers. There's drivers for all kinds of um, issues you might run into. I have a driver that adjusts the contrast for different configurations. I might want a different contrast using a, a spreadsheet program versus a game versus um, Word. Um, so, so that's all done. Um, and you know, it truly does have multitasking. With uh, so I can switch between the built-in applications, and then I use a program called Software Carousel, which lets me run virtual instances of DOS. So, you know, and, and one of my favorite things about this device is it's, it's distraction free. I don't have the internet on this device. I can't get distracted looking at cat videos or, you know, or, you know, any, anything online, you know, people on Facebook trying to contact me. I, every, everything here is productivity based, you know. Um, so, so that's great when I'm trying to organize my thoughts or I want to write, you know, notes, notes on the go. Um, you know, if we compare this to a, a modern smartphone, modern smartphone certainly is harder for me to type on. I, I know some some kids today can type pretty fast on them. Um, the smartphone, of course, has a limited battery life compared to the 20 to 30 hours on this device, which will probably get you through a month or so. Um, you know, a smartphone, the professional software on a smartphone can be pretty awkward to use. Um, I, can, I, I I grew up, you know, as a, as a young boy using a lot of the DOS software, so so it's it's natural for me. Um, and you know, of course, the, the iPhone would be or smartphone would be full of distractions. I, I do carry a smartphone with me too, but I, I definitely, if I'm writing something or wanting to read something, I, I tend to go to this device instead. Um, a laptop, you know, even the smallest laptops are giant compared to this one. You can't really fit one on in your pocket. You know, even a lightweight. Uh, you know, I have a I have a nice uh, ThinkPad at, at work that you know is the equivalent of a Mac Air in size. But you know, I still don't like carrying that around on a plane or something. It's still you know sort of awkward for me to work with compared to this. You know where I can use this on the subway or something like that with, with no problem, especially, you know, with the, with instant on features that, you know, are just as good as what we have today. Um, a, a laptop would look like crap if you took it to the park and used it in the sunlight. Um, a laptop is also full of distractions. So let's take a little bit about the built-in software. So we, we have, um, you know, by default, you've got like an appointment manager here, um, which, which we're loading up now. Um, I, I honestly wouldn't use stuff like, like that today. Um, why? When you have um, when you have an iPhone that has a built-in, uh, you can sync to to all of your internet, um, you know, your Google account and stuff, and automatically have all of your contact information, all of your, you know, you, there's an appointment book scheduler, but you know, I'm going to be using Google Calendar on my phone for something like that. It has an excellent built-in note taker um, with with pretty pretty cool outlining abilities. Um, you know, it's it's got a memo pad. Uh, and it has a little notepad too for shorter notes. It has a decent database software built in. Um, it has a version of Lotus um, one two three built in. Although most of the time I'm using the full version that I've installed on this device. Um, you can also you can also install like a well by default it has a graphical user interface. I have it turned off here to be a text based interface. But you have a a launcher uh, app environment here where you can you can add your own. You know, I've added some some games I, I like to play and some reading book reading software in here, ebook reading software, and um, there's a hex calculator that's actually built into the memory here, but not ex accessible by default um, unless you know the path to it. So you know that's definitely handy for programming and whatnot. Um, let's talk about software software carousel a bit. So software carousel lets me switch from different instances of DOS. I, I can have a full instance loaded up with, with Word. I can have a full instance loaded up with uh, compiling software of a game, and I can easily switch to them by pressing control and a button. So I think the first thing we're going to look at here is a, a, a game I like to play called Ogre. Um, this game uses a mouse. So uh, you heard the beep there. Oh, I guess I, um, I, 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 I uninstalled it when I was, when I was working with this device. Um, but, you know, I certainly could load it up here. Um, you know, I'm in a DOS environment here. Let me let me do that. So I'm going to go to CD slash games. Oops, I misspelled that. 
it's a little hard to type when I'm looking through the, the screen. Strategy. Let's hope I got my path right, yep. Listen to that great, great uh, sound. So, you know, here's the game. This device, you know, some people I've seen on YouTube trying to play action games on this. The screen does blur really bad. Um, you know, I, I prefer like the older strategy games, older adventure games. I had Ultima loaded up here. I think I unloaded it. Let's see if, let's see if I still have it in my memory. Oh, I'm sorry about that, but um, I'm, I'm not going to take the time to load what Ultima. Well, yeah, I'm not going to take the time to load, load up what Ultima looks like. You guys have probably seen Ultima before, but, you know, games like that work really, really great on this grayscale um you know, grayscale screen. Um, here I'm moving on to uh, a, a C compiler. Uh, this is Turbo C Plus from the from the early 90s. Um, so you know, I'm I'm learning C. Um, you know, I, re I really am doing this as a hobby. You know, I, I know this isn't the latest compiler, so I'm missing out on some stuff. But you know, sometimes the best compiler is the one in your pocket, right? So you know, I can create you know any any anything I really want to create in here and and you know start learning more about C. You know, there's compilers for 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 you know any operating system that was was. I'm sorry, any any um, programming environment that was big in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, from Pascal to, you know, the various versions, C, C, C+, um, um, the various forms of BASIC, um, and, and so on. You, you can find it if you can remember it. Um, and it'll probably install just fine on this device. So um, moving on to to Word, which we demoed before, you know, I, I, I've got spell check built in there. I've got, you know, I can, I can bold. You might see some of this uh, text is bolded. Um, you know, I, I, this is a great productivity tool for me. Um, and then, and then finally moving on to, to Lotus. Um, so, so when, when I'm switching instances here, it's, it's basically loading them up like it's loading DOS up for the first time. Um, so, um, so, so now that, now that all my instances are loaded, I, I'll show you how I can swap from one to the next. I'm just going to retrieve a file here so you can see, um, this, this is a document where I keep track of, you know, sales and profit that I've made for, for everything I've, I modify Game, Game Boys on eBay and resell them. Um, so I'm just tracking my profits here, um, which I went, aren't, aren't always super high, but, but, you know, if the IRS comes one day and, and tries to make me uh, pay taxes on, on my, you know, t gross, gross revenue, I can, I can, I can show, you know, what, what I've actually, you know, put into it. So, so now I'm going to switch back to, uh, to, to Word. You'll see it now, now that they're all loaded up, it's going to, it's going to switch really fast and it's going to be exactly where I left off. Right. So that's, that's true multitasking on the go, you know? So, you know, in a small device, um, with a, with a, with a small printer that I can use on the go, um, and, you know, even, even mouse support and support for, you know, any application I can dream of, this this is a daily companion for me. You know, I I work in in a high tech. You know, I work for a dot com company, um, leading a product team. But but I still like to outline my notes on this. And you know, for anything that I don't need to be connected to the web on, I still prefer this this device here. So that's all I really wanted to show you. I just wanted to give you an overview of how I use this um, because there's a lot of reviews of this device, but not a lot of people showing how they actually use it in their day to day life. But for me, it's it's a great tool um, and and really something I I. I I can live without it, but but I, I really do enjoy having it on me. Um, that's it. Um, you know, hopefully, if, if you're interested in this device, you can, you can find one and, and and find all the excellent resources that are still out there and configure it for for your needs. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.